Hello and welcome to Replacement Player Baseball. Today, we're going to get the final game of Cubs and Mets from New York. The Cubs have taken two out of the first three games, and now, here in game four, they're trying to make it three out of four on this one city road trip. For today's game, the Cubs are going to be pulling Tariq Skubal out of the bullpen to make today's start due to the doubleheader that was played a few days ago. Scubal is making appearance number 18. This is his fourth start of the season. He has a 4-3 record with a 2.05 ERA and a 0.91 whip. Cubs lineup today will be Horner, Correa, Santana, Springer, who's hit three home runs in his last two games, Harper, Kron, Amaya, Estrada, and Scubal batting ninth. For the Mets, lefty David Peterson will be on the mound. He's making appearance number 14. With a 4-4 four four record, he has a 5-13 ERA and a 140 whip. The Mets lineup will be Jimenez, Nimmo, Alonzo, McNeil, Davis, Conforto, Giuliermo, Avila, and Peterson batting ninth. It is 74 degrees today in New York, the wind blowing left to right at 12 MPH, and it is time to start today's game. And now, with David Peterson on the mound, Nico Horner is stepping up to the plate. And it is time to get this game underway. The Cubs coming in, first place in the NL Central with a 45-22 and record. And 12 and a half games up on the second place St. Louis Cardinals. Horner standing into the, into the plate. He is waiting for the pitch from Peterson. And here it comes. And there's a pop-up to right. Adjusting at medium depth as the right fielder. He makes the play for out number one. Peterson now facing Correa with one out, nobody on. Here's a full count pitch to Carlos Correa. And he checks his swing. That is ball four. So Correa draws the walk with one out in the top of the first inning. Danny Santana now the batter. He is hitting 271 with eight home runs on the season. Santana facing Peterson with a one and two count. Peterson delivers. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. That was a fastball high and away, and Santana chased it for the second out of the inning. George Springer now the batter with two outs and the runner on first. Peterson with the one and two pitch. Here it comes. Springer grounds it over to second. Picked up and thrown over to first. That'll end the inning. So the Cubs strand a runner. They do not score. We go to the bottom of the first of a nothing-nothing ball game. Scubal is on the mound, facing off with Jimenez to lead off for the Mets in the bottom of the first. Two balls is the count. Scubal looking to deliver the pitch. And there's a liner right at the third baseman. Estrada reeks up and grabs it for out number one. Nimmo now the batter. One out, nobody on. First pitch to Brandon Nimmo. Here it comes. Liner up the middle. That'll be a base hit. That one was not at anybody, and it made it all the way into center field for a single. Scubal now facing Pete Alonzo. One out, one man on. One ball is the count. Here's the pitch. Alonzo pops it up. Straight away center field. Going back, the center fielder actually is going to watch that one carry beyond the wall. 2 nothing Mets. 453 feet out to straightaway center field, and the Mets have grabbed the early lead here in the bottom of the first inning. McNeil now the batter, with one out, nobody on. Here's the first pitch to Jeff McNeil. And a pop-up to left. This is going to be routine, as the left fielder Santana, excuse me, the left fielder Tauschman, no, that is Santana, because Cron is at first today. Santana makes the play for out number two. J.D. Davis now the batter, with two outs, nobody on. One and two is the count. Scubal delivers. There's a swing and a miss to end the inning, and Scubal got back on track, retiring the final two batters that he faced, and now we go to the top of the second of a 2-0 ball game. Bryce Harper leading off the Cubs in the top of the second. Full count pitch. Harper waiting. That is low and in for ball four. So Harper draws the walk, his first of the game. Cron now the batter. Runner on first, nobody out. Peterson 
with the two and one pitch, and Kron grounds it to third. The throw goes to second, the relay to first, and a 5 4 3 double play. So that erases Harper, and now Amaya steps up to the plate with two outs and nobody on base. Peterson working with a one ball count. Here comes the pitch, and a drive to deep left. Going back as the left fielder, he's going to watch that one clear the wall. That makes this a two to one ball game. Here in the top of the second inning, the Cubs have just cut the Mets' lead in half as the home run derby continues. It is 368 feet down the left field line. Miguel Amaya with home run number seven on the season, and it brings up Thyro Estrada. Two outs, nobody on. Peterson with a full count. Here comes the pitch and a pop-up to short center field. Coming in is Nimmo. He looks up and makes the play to end the inning. So the Cubs get one back. We go to the bottom of the second of a two to one ball game. And now Conforto coming up to face Scooball here in the bottom of the second inning. Two strikes is the count. Scooball delivers. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. That's low and in, and he chased it for the first out of the inning. Next up, Scooball facing Giuliermo with one out, nobody on. One and one is the count. And there's a liner in the center field. That'll be another base hit. He went down and got that one <clears throat> and drove it into center for a single. Avila now the batter with one out, one man on. Good double play candidate right here if he can get a ground ball. One and two is the count. Scooball delivers. Strike three is called on the outside corner. That was a nasty slider. And Avila watches it for strike three. Now the pitcher Peterson is the batter with two outs and the runner still on first. Scooball working. First pitch. And that the throw goes down to first. Oh, man. They tried to pick him off. They caught him. thought they caught him leaning the wrong way. So that'll still be a runner on first and two outs. And Scooball working with a three and one count. Here is the pitch. Peterson grounds it to second. Horner has it. He throws to first, which ends the inning. So the Mets strand a runner. They do not score. We go to the top of the third of a two to one ball game. Scooball now leading off against Peterson here in the top of the third. One and one is the count. And Scooball grounds it towards second. The second baseman plays it on a hop. Throw over to first for out number one. Peterson facing Horner with one out, nobody on. One and two is the count. Here's the pitch, and Nico Horner grounds it to second. Again, the throw goes to first, and again, the runner is retired for the second out of the inning. Correa now the batter. Two outs, nobody on. Peterson with a one ball count looking to deliver the pitch and Correa slaps it up the middle That'll be a single as Nimmo gets it back into the cutoff man That'll be a lead, a two out single for Carlos Correa in the top of the third inning Danny Santana now the batter Two outs one man on Cubs down by one Here's the first pitch to Danny Santana and that's a pop-up toward the line in left field shading over the left fielder makes the play to end the inning. So the Cubs strand a runner. We go to the bottom of the third of a two to one ball game. Scooball working to Jimenez in the top bottom of the third inning. One ball is the count. Here comes the pitch and there's a drive right center field. I believe he got all that one. It is out of the ballpark. And the Mets have a lead off home run in the bottom of the third inning, making this a three to one ball game, 432 feet to right center field. And now the Mets have reestablished a two run lead, <clears throat> excuse me, as Scooball faces Nimmo here in the bottom of the third. First pitch to Brandon Nimmo, and that's a liner into right field. Harper plays it on a hop, and that's gonna be a single with nobody out in the bottom of the third. Scooball now facing Alonzo. Alonzo hit a home run his first time up. Scooball's going to need a different approach this time around. Two and two is the count. Here's the pitch, and that is strike three called. So Alonzo punched out with the fastball. First out of the inning, and that brings up McNeil. So with Nimmo on first, we're actually going to throw over to first and see if we can catch him napping. Nope, he throws. He gets back on the throw. Let's pitch to the batter, see what we get. That's a ball low. And now we'll throw over to first again, see if we can catch him sleeping. Nope, nothing doing. Pitch to the batter, see what happens here. 
Another ball low. That was a curveball that he missed down low with. So we got to focus on getting this batter out now. McNeil batting with a 2-2 count. And a liner into the gap in left center field. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Chasing his Springer. He gets it back into the cutoff man. No, he skips the cutoff man and he rifles it all the way home. But the throw is late. That's going to be an RBI double. And now this is a 4-1 ball game in the bottom of the third inning. <clears throat> so now, Scubal facing Davis as McNeil has his 31st RBI of the season, giving the Mets a 4-1 lead. Scubal working with a full count. Here comes the pitch, and there's a grounder towards short. The runner has looked back. The throw goes over to first, and that is out number two. Conforto the batter. Two outs, one man on. Here is the first pitch to Conforto, and he hits him. So he hits him, and Conforto takes the base. Scubal hits him with a slider. And now Giuliermo is the batter with two outs, two men on. He is one for one today. Scubal working with a one strike count. Here's the pitch. And there's a pop up. Short left field coming in is Santana. He looks up and he puts it away to end the inning. The Mets, however, score two more times, taking a four to one lead into the top of the fourth inning. George Springer now the batter in the top of the fourth. He is waiting for the three and one pitch. And he takes low for ball four. So Springer with the leadoff walk. As he heads down to first, it brings up Bryce Harper. Harper facing Peterson. Nobody out, one man on. Harper waiting for the one and two pitch. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. So Harper swings and misses at the changeup for the first out of the inning. Cron now the batter. 0 for 1 today. Cron facing Peterson with one out, one man on. Cubs down by three. Here's the three and one pitch. That is outside for ball four. So Cron with a good eye draws the walk. And now Peterson has issued four walks in this ball game. Miguel Amaya is the next batter with one out and two men on. And I feel like that we probably just need to go ahead and warm up a reliever because if... Scubal's spot comes up in this inning. We are definitely going... Well, so how... He's 88%. Junior Fernandez, no, he's 38%. Liam Hendricks is 56%. Jimenez is 44%. Well, it's going to take... A combination of these guys to get through the game if this is in fact what ends up happening but I'm gonna warm up Liam Hendricks ooh no there's a whole just a whole slug of lefties coming up Gabriel Moya is gonna be who's warmed up <clears throat> pardon me so Peterson facing Amaya with one out two men on here in the top of the fourth inning one strike is the count Here's the pitch to Miguel Amaya, and there's a grounder back toward the mound. The pitcher has it. He throws to second, the relay to first, and there is a 1-4-3 double play to end the inning. So the Cubs strand a runner. They do not score. We're going to the bottom of the fourth of a 4-1 ball game. So all that was for nothing. Moya sits down, and Scubal is now going to work in the bottom of the fourth to the 8-9-1 and one batters in the Mets' line. Here's a 2-1 count, Scubal delivering the pitch. There's a liner past the second baseman into right field. Harper plays it on a hop. That's a leadoff single. And now Peterson, the batter, with nobody out, one man on. Scubal working first pitch. The bunt is laid down. The first baseman, Cron, has it. He flips to the second baseman, Horner, who's covering for out number one. Jimenez now the batter. With one out and runner on second. Mets up by three. Here's the one and two count. Scubal delivers the pitch. There's a swing. Or no, a, that is a strike three looking. A backwards K for Jimenez. And that is going to be the second out of the inning. And now Scubal faces Nemo. With two outs, runner on second. Bottom of the fourth inning. Scubal working with a one strike count. And there's a grounder toward first. Kron has it. He steps on the base and that'll end the inning. The Mets do not score. They strand a runner. We're going to the top of the fifth of a 4-1 to ball game. So Scubal's day is definitely now over. 
the Mets are going to send up righty, lefty, righty in the next half inning, which means that we can hopefully bring in Liam Hendricks and have him throw in the fifth. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Peterson is facing Thyro Estrada to lead off the top of the fifth inning. Estrada waiting for the two-strike pitch. Here it comes. And a liner into the right field corner. That's going to be extra bases. Estrada rounding first, heading for second. He is going to have a leadoff double as he slides in safely to second base. And the Cubs trying to get a rally going here in the fifth inning with a leadoff double. And now Scooball is the batter. And now we're going to see a pinch hitter, which is going to be Wilson Ramos. Ramos will come off the bench and bat from the right side against the lefty Peterson in the top of the fifth inning. There's a runner on second and nobody out. Here comes the 2-2 pitch to Wilson Ramos. Peterson delivers. And a swing and a miss for strike three. Ramos swings and misses at the slider for the first out of the inning. Nico Horner now the batter with one out. Runner still on second. Peterson working. First pitch to Nico Horner. And he slaps that one in the gap in right center field. That's going to drive in a run. Horner heading for extra bases. He's going to round first, heading for second. He might be motoring for third. Nope, he stops at second with a double. So an RBI double for Nico Horner makes this a 4-2 ball game in the top of the fifth inning. Carlos Correa now the batter. He's facing Peterson with one out and runner on second. Here comes the full count pitch. That is a swing and a miss for strike three. That was a fastball that was up at his eyes, and he could not lay off. Two outs now in the inning, and Danny Santana is the batter. The switch hitting Santana steps up from the right side against the lefty Peterson with two outs. Runner in scoring position here in the top of the fifth inning. One run already in. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Santana watches strike three go by on the outside corner. So the inning is over. The Cubs do get one back. They strand one. We go to the bottom of the fifth of a 4-2 ball game. And now, Liam Hendricks is, in fact, going to come into this ball game to pitch. He will come into the number nine spot. Hendricks on the mound to face Pete Alonso here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Alonso leading off for the Mets. He's one for two with a home run today. Here's the one and two count. Hendricks, you looking for the sign, delivers the pitch. And there's a drive to deep left center field. I believe that is out of the ballpark. Pete Alonso with his second home run of the day. A leadoff 413 foot home run to left field. And the Mets now have a 5 to 2 lead. So now McNeil is the batter with nobody out, nobody on. One run already in. Hendricks working. Here's the first pitch to Jeff McNeil. And that's a grounder up the middle. A shortstop Correa has it. He throws to first. That's out number one. Hendricks now facing Davis with one out. Nobody on. Here is the one strike pitch from Liam Hendricks. And that's a grounder toward third. Estrada has this one. He throws over to first for out number two. Conforto now the batter with two outs. Nobody on. One ball is the count. Here's the pitch. Grounder toward first. Cron has it. He steps on the base and ends the inning. So after giving up the leadoff home run, Liam Hendricks retires the next three to get out of the inning. We go to the top of the sixth. It's a 5-2 to two Met lead. And now, I don't think that we can really... Oh, wrong team. Hendricks only threw nine pitches. I don't know if we can really trust him to leave him out there or not. We're going to warm up Gabriel Moya now. He is going to come into the game for real this time. So Peterson facing Springer in the top of the sixth inning. The Cubs are down by three again, and they are looking to rally again. 2-2 two -two count. Springer drives that one into deep left field. I think Springer's got all that one. That's going to be a home run for George Springer. And now this is a 5-3 to three ball game. As a 401-foot home run clears the left field fence. And the George Springer now has 13 home runs on the season. Moving back into sole possession of lead for the Cubs team. 
And now Bryce Harper is the batter. Harper facing Peterson in the top of the sixth. One run already in. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. And Harper swings and misses for strike three. Is that three strikeouts on the day for Bryce Harper? I'm not sure, but he goes back to the dugout as the first out of the inning. C.J. Cron now the batter. Top of the sixth, one out, nobody on. One strike is the count to C.J. Cron. And Cron golfs that one into short left field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. So Cron stopping at first with a single here in the top of the sixth inning. Miguel Amaya is the next batter. And this is going to be a situation where we're going to pinch run. Malik Smith is going to come in and he's going to pinch run for C.J. Cron. And he will stay in this game and play left field, shifting Danny Santana over to first. So now, with Peterson on the mound, Amaya batting, Avila, the catcher, is above average behind the plate. Amaya, who is one for two with a home run today, facing Peterson in the top of the sixth inning. One out, one man on, one run already in. And we're going to look for a situation to do the run and hit here. Let's see what happens. Swinging away, we get ball one, it looks like. No, that was strike one. He called it a strike. That looked like it was high and away. Peterson now facing Amaya with a one strike count and there's a grounder up the middle shortstop has it the throw is at first as there's no chance to get the speedy Malik Smith at second base so that'll act as a sacrifice and it brings up Thyro Estrada Estrada is one for two today and he's facing the new Met pitcher Robert Gesselman Gesselman has thrown 24 and a third innings. He's walked 19, struck out 25 with a 5.18 ERA. Estrada, for his part, is batting 273 on the season with three home runs and 16 RBIs. He is one for two today with a runner on second and two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Estrada is going to face Gesselman in an attempt to help the Cubs get one run closer in this half inning. Here comes the first pitch. Estrada takes. That looks like it was outside for ball one. Nope, that's called a strike again. Man, that must have been right on the outside corner. Anyway, we're going to switch this back over to one pitch mode. Gesselman working with a two strike count and Estrada grounds it to second. The throw goes to first and that ends the inning. So the Cubs do not score. They strand one. We're going now to the bottom of the sixth of a five to three ball game. And Gabriel Moya is going to be brought in to pitch. Moya is actually going to come in to the number eight spot. And Tristan Cassis is going to be brought into the number nine spot. He will lead off the next half inning. And I think that we'll go ahead and play him at third base today. So, Moya on the mound, <clears throat> excuse me, facing the lefty, Juliermo, in the bottom of the sixth inning. Moya has thrown 27 and two-thirds innings, walked 10, struck out 26 with a 488 ERA. He's going to face the 7, 8, 9 batters in the Mets lineup in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's a full count pitch from Moya. As he looks for the sign, here it comes. Popped up off the end of the bat to left field. Going over is Malik Smith. He makes the catch for out number one. Moya now facing Avila with one out. Nobody on. Two strikes is the count. Moya delivers the pitch. There's a grounder towards second. Horner charges. He has it. The throw over to first, and that's out number two. Next up is Dominic Smith, who is pinch hitting for the pitcher spot. Moya facing Dominic Smith. With two outs, nobody on. Here's the one and one count. Gabriel Moya with the pitch. And a pop-up on the infield. Coming out from behind the plate is Amaya. He's actually called off by Cassis, who makes the catch for out number three. I guess Cassis really wanted to be the catcher in that situation, but he had to call off the catcher to make the catch. We go now to the top of the seventh. It's a 5-3 ball game here in New York. And Tristan Cassis 
is going to lead off against Taylor McGill in the top of the seventh for the Cubs. McGill has thrown five and a third innings, walked one, struck out seven with a 169 ERA. Cassis, three for 19 with a home run on the season. Here's a full count pitch to Tristan Cassis. And he lines that one into center field. That is going to be caught for out number one. Nimmo adjusting a few steps to his right and making the catch. Nico Horner now the batter with one out, nobody on. McGill working with a 2-2 count. Here is the pitch to Nico Horner. And Horner swings and misses for strike three. That's the second out of the inning, and it brings up Carlos Correa. Two outs, nobody on. Three and, oh, three and one is the count, and that is high for ball four. So Correa leaves, lays off of the high pitch this time, and he draws the walk with two outs in the top of the seventh. McGill now facing Danny Santana. Santana over three today, but he's batting from the left side for the first time in today's ballgame. Santana waiting for the one-strike pitch. And that's, the throw goes down to first. Oh, that was a ball. The throw goes down to first as they try to pick off Correa, but he is dives back safely. So Santana now waiting for the 2-2 pitch. And he swings and misses to end the inning. So the Cubs strand a runner. They do not score. We're going to the bottom of the seventh of a 5-3 ball game. And Gabriel Moya coming back out for inning of work number two here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Moya facing Jimenez with a one and two count. Here's the pitch. Grounder up the middle. Taking it is Horner. He has the play. He throws to first. They get him by a step for out number one. That was a really close play over at first. Now Brandon Nimmo is the batter. One out, nobody on. One and one is the count as Nimmo awaits the pitch. And there's a drive into the gap in right center field. That one's going one hop to the wall. Harper chasing. He gets it back into the cutoff man as the runner stops at second with a one-out double. And now we are going to need to warm up another reliever. In this case, it's going to be Joe Jimenez. If we need somebody to get us out of the inning... It's going to have to be him. So now, we are going to visit the mound. He says, I'm still good. Thank you very much. He's thrown 19 pitches. But anyway, Moya now facing Pete Alonzo with one out, one man on. I'll tell you, it's very tempting to walk Pete Alonzo right here. He hit his 20th home run earlier in this game and just faced McNeil with a force at any of the bases other than home. So it's the bottom of the seventh inning. One out, runner on second. We're trying to hold this at a two-run deficit. And Moya is going to issue the intentional walk to Pete Alonzo right here. So Alonzo on first. And Nimmo on second. And now Jeff McNeil the batter. McNeil, one for three with an RBI today. Facing the lefty Moya in the bottom of the seventh. One out, two men on. Here comes the first pitch. And there's a liner into left. Playing on the hop is Malik Smith. He gets it back in to the cutoff man. But that's going to be a single, which loads the bases in the bottom of the seventh inning. And now J.D. Davis is the batter. Moya facing Davis. With one out, the runners on every base. We're going to throw... Throw over to third. Why can't I do a pickoff throw over to first? That's kind of annoying. I want to do one pickoff throw to see if Jimenez is actually... If Jimenez is ready to come into this game. But if I do a pickoff throw to third, and that, that just doesn't... It seems like a bad plan. So Moya pitching to Davis with a two-strike count. Here's the pitch. And there's a liner into left. Two strikes was the count. Moya could not convert. One run is in. The throw comes home. And the runner is going to be safe at home. So J.D. Davis with a two-run RBI single. And the Mets now have a 7-3 lead. Moya had a two-strike count. He could not get the, run, the batter out. And now Conforto is the batter. With one out and two men on here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Moya working with a 2-2 count, and there's a swing and a miss for strike three. That was the fastball up, and Conforto could not catch up with it. And now, 
Jimenez is ready to come into the game. Moya is still on the mound with two outs, two men on, and we're going to go ahead and bring in Jimenez to close out this inning. Joe Jimenez comes in out of the bullpen. He has thrown 24 innings, walked four, struck out 33 with a 375 ERA. Jimenez facing the Mets' second baseman, who is one for three today, with two outs, two men on in the bottom of the seventh inning. Two runs already in. Here comes the pitch. Joe Jimenez looking for the sign. And there's a liner into center field. That's another base hit. So Jimenez gives up the single. Springer's throw comes to the cutoff, man. The bases are going to be loaded again. And that brings up Alex Avila. Avila is one for three today with two outs and the bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh. Jimenez working. One and two count. Here comes the pitch. And a swing and a miss to end the inning. So Jimenez gets the strikeout to end the inning as the Mets leave the bases loaded. We go to the top of the eighth. The Mets are up by four. And George Springer is going to lead off against Tyler McGill in the top of the eighth inning. Springer, one for two with a home run today, waiting for the one ball pitch. Here it comes. And Springer lines that one past the third baseman in the left field. That's going to be a leadoff single for George Springer. He stops at first after a wide turn, and that bring up Bryce Harper. And now, Juris Familia comes out of the Mets bullpen. Familia has thrown 18 and a third innings, walked 10, struck out 15 with a 6.87 ERA. So Familia is going to face Harper with nobody out in the top of the eighth inning, a runner on first, Cubs down by four. Here comes the two-strike pitch to Bryce Harper. Familia looking for the sign and the delivery. And Harper swings and misses for the first out of the inning. Harper is not having a good day at the plate. And now Malik Smith is the batter. One out, one man on. Familia facing Malik Smith here in the top of the eighth inning. Full count pitch. That's a grounder toward third. The throw goes to second. And there's no relay to first, however, as Malik Smith beats it down the line to get a fielder's choice instead of a double play. And now Miguel Amaya is the batter with two outs and the runner on first. We're going to be looking for an opportunity to steal second right here. Swing away at the first pitch and see what happens. There's a swing and a miss for strike one. That was a fastball down. Let's see if we can steal second on the second pitch. Here it comes. That's down. Malik Smith is going to take second base without a throw. So he has nine stolen bases now on the season. So with a runner in scoring position, a 1-1 count, Miguel Amaya is facing Juris Familia here in the top of the eighth inning. One and two is the count. And Amaya lines that one past the third baseman in the left field. Malik Smith rounding third, heading home. The throw comes home. Malik Smith slides, and he is out. Malik Smith tried an aggressive base running move to score from second base, and he is out by a hair at home. So the score remains 7-3 in favor of the Mets going into the bottom of the eighth inning. And now Joe Jimenez is going to... We're going to warm up Nick Birdie. We'll visit the mound. He says he feels fine, but he's thrown five pitches, and it doesn't... All right, so Jimenez facing Starling Marte, who's pinch hitting for the number nine spot for the Mets. Marte, with five home runs and 12 RBIs on the season, a 173 batting average. He is facing Joe Jimenez with the Mets up by four in the bottom of the eighth inning. Full count. Jimenez looking to deliver the pitch, and that's a check swing for strike three. Second strikeout for Jimenez, first out of the inning. And now... Jimenez is facing Jimenez with one out, nobody on in the bottom of the eighth. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Jimenez delivers, and there's a grounder toward third. Picked up by Cassis. He throws over to first for out number two. And now Nick Birdie is ready to come in, and he's going to be brought in to face Brandon Nimmo. And we're going to make another substitution. Birdie 
is going to come into the number six spot. He is going to pitch. And Mike Tauschman will be brought in. to the number eight spot to play left field, and he will lead off the next half inning. So Birdie on the mound now has thrown 24 and two-thirds innings, walked 15, struck out 29 with a 292 ERA. Birdie facing Nemo with two outs, nobody on in the bottom of the eighth inning. One and one is the count. Birdie looking for the sign and he delivers the pitch and there's a grounder towards second horner has it he throws over to first that's going to end the inning so the mets do not score we go to the top of the ninth of a seven to three ball game tauschman is going to face the mets steve c -Sheck in the top of the ninth c is a two and zero record he's thrown 25 and two-thirds innings walked 13 struck out 31 with a 631 era c -Sheck Facing Tauschman, who has a 228 batting average and 14 RBIs on the season. So top of the ninth inning, Cubs down by four. Ciszek working. First pitch to Tauschman. He's looking for the sign. And delivering the pitch. Here it comes. And Tauschman pops it up to short left field. Coming in fast is the left fielder. He gets up there and makes the catch for out number one. Tristan Cassis now the batter with one out, nobody on. Here's the three and one pitch to Tristan Cassis, and that is low and away for ball four, so Cassis draws the walk. Is Tristan Cassis fast in any meaningful way? No, he is not. So because of that, we're going to use the final card in our deck here. Erie Adrianza, who is actually quite a bit faster is going to pinch hit pinch run excuse me for Cassis and if necessary stay in the game to play third base Adrianza is on first now as a pinch runner and Nico Horner is the batter with one out one man on in the top of the ninth inning C check working to Horner with a two and one count and that gets away it skips all the way to the backstop so Adrianza takes second on the wild pitch and now Horner batting with a 3-1 count and a runner in scoring position. C-Sheck working. He is looking for the sign. Here's the pitch. And driven into the gap in right center field. That's going all the way to the wall. That will drive in a run. Horner heading into second. He's going to slide in with a double. And this is now a 7-4 ball game in the top of the ninth inning. And now Seth Lugo comes out of the Mets bullpen to try to nail down the save. Lugo has thrown 31 innings, walked six, struck out 23, with a 2.61 ERA. Lugo is facing Correa, who is one for two today, in the top of the ninth. Runner is on second, one out. Lugo working, 2-2 two -two count. Here comes the pitch. And that's a swing and a miss for strike three. Correa chased one high and away. And Lugo gets the strikeout for the second out of the inning. Danny Santana now the batter with two outs and the runner on second. Lugo working to Santana who will bat from the left side. Santana's over four today. Here comes the two strike pitch. Seth Lugo delivers a grounder toward first. The first baseman Alonzo picks it up. He steps on the base and that ends the inning. So the Mets are victorious 7-4 in the final game of this four game series. The Mets taking seven runs on 12 hits with no errors. The Cubs, four runs on nine hits with no errors. The player of today's game is the Mets' Pete Alonso. He managed to hit two home runs, his 19th and 20th of the season. Alonso also increased his season total to 46 RBIs as he went two for three, scored three times, and had three RBIs and a walk. So the Cubs' Tariq Skubal takes the loss. He went four innings of seven-hit, four-run baseball with five strikeouts and two home runs allowed. Hendricks and Moya both threw out of the bullpen, allowed some runs to score. Jimenez actually worked a scoreless inning, and then Birdie got the final out in the eighth inning. The Mets' David Peterson got the win. 
He goes to five and four on the season. He threw five and two thirds innings of six hit three run baseball with four walks and six strikeouts. And Seth Lugo gets his 14th save of the season out of the bullpen. So the Cubs drop to 45 and 23, while the Mets improve to 29 and 39, and the Cubs and Mets fight to a two game tie in this four game series. Thank you for watching Replacement Player Baseball.